Welcome everyone, uh, my name is Clint Grove. I wanna show you today how I built a common data model which feeds a Customer Insights uh, instance. Customer Insights is part of Dynamics 365 and you can use it to, uh, your data source can be looking at, well for example, if you click on here, you see you can look at a generation two lake store. Like it's a little bit like um, this, I suppose. Uh, let's go to this one. So this is this is one I'm looking at, which has got one entity only, and I've got the idea of incremental data and full data. So you've got the full data load, which is day zero load, and then you've got the incremental data as well. So I'm going to show you how I did that with um, some sample data, which I just created, generated some random names, some random emails and such, and then I put that into a common data model. So I had some um, sample files. I've got about um, four Excel files just with like a contact ID, a GUID there. Then I've got the names randomly generated, some birth dates. And then this is the important part is having a date uh, changed over here. So you can do like that, right? And I've just got like a whole lot of Excel files that I'm going to feed in. So this is the date of, let's say the 20, this is the 20, like I've got the date in the file name. 2022, 10, 23, and the next one is um, 22, you know, so then I've got another one for the 21st. So I'm gonna feed in the 20th, which is for this one here. It's got like the bulk load, and then and then we're gonna feed in the next day's data and the next day's data. Yes, so I'm using Synapse. Uh, you can use Data Factory if you want, same thing. It doesn't really matter what you use, okay? So as long as you, this is just an example using mapping data flows. And the idea is that you would go from your, you'd get the metadata from the file name from your um, C, your CSV. So you just create a data set that's looking at your CSV. And then obviously for bulk, you know, you could imagine this could be um, dynamically loaded and automated. But uh, I'm going to load the 20th that you can see there. I'll load the 21st, 22nd and 23rd. And when I do that, um, this data flow is going to, go and get the year name month and day and hour from the file name and it's going to make a, a delta uh, lake and the delta lake is going to go you know from that source folder using upserts um, it's quite a basic um, flow this so just saying upsert true and then i'm going to make sure that my columns are formatted properly um, so here i'm creating a year month column year month column year month day and hour um, columns and I'm, I'm making sure that my date added date change and my birth date are formatted correctly so those are under your derived columns and then over here I'm going to sync that into a delta lake and then that delta lake uh, the settings are actually that delete probably doesn't work but I know it just doesn't upset then the important part is you, you set your partitioning right so your partitioning will be year month day and then hour and that comes from the file name of course go into our delta lake and this one here and then you'll see you've got your delta log you've got your year your month your day and there's all the days that i've loaded so that was my bulk load and that was delta files delta files delta files so changed files coming in every day um and that being your bulk load on the 20th now uh let's have a look at some of the stuff that changed over the over the time right so i'm gonna give you an example this person here uh, this person is all, like I said, fake data, so no problem. And you can see that the delete flag is no. Then the next day, that person comes in and they and they want to flag that person as deleting being yes. Okay. And then in that way, what you do in your data flow is, okay, so there's a new file come in. Uh, now we have to put that person in the deletes. So... First of all, obviously you've got your data flow making your delta lake. The delta lake is is not the topic of this video, but you know if you would, you can look at other videos about that. And then this goes in. So from here, this is the start of your common data model, and it goes from your delta lake, and obviously it's getting only the days that it needs to get based on the file name. So this is the file name here. Uh, year month day all comes from the file name and then you only want to load the data for that particular day then it goes is there is there a delete is it that row should be deleted yes or no uh, if if no then it goes to upserts and i've got another data flow that just does the opposite that's 
if it is delete, uh, you know set for deletion then it goes to the deletion part and the way that you do that is you say and here uh, the root location where it goes where it lands in your common data model is it lands in this part, um, partition should we say so that can be dynamically made because you can have multiple entities an entity is like a database table so that's your contact database table or your contact entity going into incremental data year month day and whatever and then it's going to go up to upsets then the opposite is true for uh, let's go back to your deletes and then your deletes if you see the deletes will be settings and then this one will be deletes like that okay so it's uh, just to show you how this works um well, obviously there's, there's a lot to this which we can't get through everything in, a, in this shortish video but i've got a logical entity that i've made myself so this is what your logical entity looks like um it's quite simple where you've got the name of your entity so think of that as your database table and then this is the attributes so you know if i collapse this it has these attributes which are they think of them as column names so easy to understand and so that is your logic that defines what your entity looks like defines what your table looks like defines what your if you if you were to think of it as a database table it defines what your database table looks like and that's what you put over there under custom so i've made a custom one you can use standard standard uh, you'd want to look at if i click on that it's going to show you um it's going to want to point to the github standard common data model definitions all right but they're quite complex and so i just thought i'd do a custom one then uh you want to tell it where it should land you know where the common data should land so in this case here um so this something land in this container that's the, that's the easy part there and then the manifest name can be any name you want that's a random name and you can have multiple data flows going to the same manifest file Okay, that's the idea. So I think it's pretty easy to understand that. You've got a custom one, it's a log logical entity, it defines what your, your logical entity looks like. Remember that this is the name of the file and that's the name of your entity. Just flashing that back up here, you can see contact adorn logical.cdm.json and that's your entity name there, contact. So then <coughs> that, you have to put that in there. <coughs> so, um, you know, you can, the corpus folder is just where that file uh, resides so you can see I've got that under here uh, under there so scheme of contacts and these are all my source files for you know uh, my common data model so imagine this being a source going into your delta first and then into your um, nonprofit core okay that obviously can be any name you want so here this defines this manifest then defines what your common data model looks like so that manifest looks a little bit like this here um, so once it's done and you've done multiple days of loads, you'll have, um, this is good. This can have many entities by the way. So you, so you see how it's got like an array. So this says, okay, what's the array of all your entities for this demo? I'm just got one entity. So it's just contacts. So it's like, okay, here's the contact entity. And this is where all the data is for the, for, um, the, the contacts. So let's say this is the entity path. Uh, so this is where you'd find the information about this entity. And what this entity is structured like and then here are the data partitions for it so think of think about it this manifest is pointing to this cdm.json and it's saying that the data for this uh, entity belongs in this folder so that's uh, pretty simple to understand uh that part there so now you oh, that's basically it i mean i know you know it looks simple like here but when you actually build this you know there's a few moving pieces uh, obviously, I'm I'm sending the year, month, day, hour to those different data flows as well as well as to the um, Delta Lake, and that helps me to construct, you know, my full data load and my incremental data load. Now let's get on to the customer insights where we want to connect this customer insights uh, environment uh, to that common data model. So if I just get out of this, back to data sources. And the way I set it up, I'll just show you if I click on this again, uh, maybe not, sorry, I'll click on the little pencil button. Oh yeah, this. so this is like, okay, I'm gonna connect to my container and then I'm gonna go next. And then it looks, it says, okay, where's your manifest file? So here it is, here's my manifest file. 
and then you can set your uh, obviously including your refresh and then you can set your incremental ingestion and then uh, as long as you're following this pattern and I'm going to show you what that does in a second uh, it's going to ask you from which column should we base the last updated on and we'll put it on the last modified uh, sorry modified on column which is a column in the in the delta lake or in the common data model and then the primary key is the contact id so um just to show you what that looks like we go to i don't know let's go to this here so we say run this this is the mm, common data model and i'm looking at data in the incremental data folder and we spoke about that person eliza hilton which um initially in the uh, so if I go um, this will obviously live in incremental data but under the, the, the deletes um, maybe I can show you that if we go oh, you won't actually see it because it'll, it'll live inside if I go into there and incremental data and I go into there and I go into the 21st inside of the deletes that Eliza Hilton person would exist inside of the deletes and not obviously exist under uh, the upserts because according to our files if we go look at this one here um, that person Eliza Hilton is sitting under delete yes and so is uh, let's have a look Abraham Ashley okay and so obviously I've, I've already built this and I've refreshed it and everything so on day zero if I had shown you you would have seen that that uh, Eliza Hilton would would have would have existed in customers, but since I've really loaded uh, all twenty four sorry all four days of data, then that person is no longer going to exist in your in your customers here. So you can see that. Let's have a look. So we've got Iliana, Eli, Iliana Carter, Elliot, random names, Eloise, Emily, Emilia, Ethan, Everett, Everly. So you see. And Eliza Hilton no longer exists. So that's a delete function, which this customer insights, obviously it, it knows to, to say, well, if you, if you are in the deletes folder, you will be deleted from customer insights, uh, customers. And, you know, once that, once you connect your data source to that manifest, like I just showed you, then it actually changes that manifest file. So this is what it originally looked like. So customer insights connects to this and says, Oh, okay, cool. Um, I see that you have a full data folder and you've got this. And so, um, but, oh, so you ticked on the incremental refresh. Cool. Um, what I'm going to do is change the manifest file. So you see when I go next and you see the incremental refresh here, I can obviously untick that. And then, you know, it won't honor the incremental ingestion. But if you do, then what's going to happen is once you do connect that and you like run a, you, you run the refresh, then Custom Insights is going to change that manifest file on your common data model to look like this. And what it's doing is it's saying, all right, forget all the fact that you've got, you know, partitions coming in and you may have multiple partitions coming in the future. Imagine you've got like partition 7, partition 8, partition 9, 10, 11, 12 as the days go forward. Then obviously that's a bit cumbersome for Custom Insights. What it does is creates like a regular expression and says, all right, um, I see that your full data is sitting in, um, uh, where is it, I saw it there, in that folder. So I'm gonna go get everything for day zero from full data. And then I'm gonna get all the incremental stuff from like this dynamic uh, way of doing things. So I'm like, all right, I'm looking for four digits, two digits, two digits, two digits, and then upserts and then any file inside there. And, I, and that's based, that, that is used for your incremental ingestion. So that'll be your upserts there. And then your deletes over there and and that's it and so then you obviously do a unify um which is like just i think you can have like multiple entities feeding into the customers here i'm not actually that experienced at all with custom insights just been using it for a few days but um you know we were we, we were tasked to build a common data model and this is just a demo of course the demo data model but i thought i'd share my experiences with you guys to say this is how customer insights can connect and i think it's i think it's pretty cool in that um customer insights can do this incremental refresh and it can honor the the upserts and deletes folder 
so that if you delete a you know a person from your let's say you have a okay i've got this customer this customer no longer wants to be with us let's delete that customer then 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 you say to the to custom insights hey this person wants to be deleted and then when it does the unify and it does all that stuff it comes into here and that customer's gone and then you know if you use this to do any kind of marketing to your customers obviously no marketing will go out to that person because they no longer exist in your customer um, database so that's it if you've got any comments or questions you know put it down in the chat and then i'll, I'll be happy to maybe go through some more stuff or whatever it may be but that is the basic the basis of how to use mapping data flows to build a delta lake and then into your oh, into your uh, upserts and deletes for a common data model so i hope you you know through flashing through all these screens you could have seen all the different ways in which um, obviously you do mapping as well um, all the different ways of how you can do your common data model just remember one thing is that to do a common data model you have to have an inline data set and choose your inline data set of common data model there as well as for your um car your delta lake when you build a delta lake in let's go to this one in uh, there's your delta lake there and also it's an inline uh, data set and choose delta so that's it for me thanks a lot for watching my name's clint grove